Canadian commander Chris Hadfield became a genuine online sensation when he performed David Bowie's Space Oddity whilst aboard the International Space Station in May last year. But it wasn't just his singing that he was famous for. He also took lots of sensational pictures of Earth, which we tweeted from space. He's now put them all together in his new book, You Are Here, Around the World in 92 Minutes, which is the amount of time it takes for the space station to orbit the planet. And he came in to chat to me just a little bit earlier on. Chris, it's lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you also, Matt. 18 months since you were last up in space. Yeah. Do you miss it? No, it's been almost 18 months exactly, which is nice because my body's now finally fully recovered. But no, it's not so much a matter of, of missing it. It's, it's, um, it's more like a richness that has existed previously in my life that now, I don't know, that allows you to appreciate what's going on now even more, I think, to have seen something that now helps give perspective for, for everything that you see that comes after. Because most people will know you from your last mission aboard the International Space sure. Station and singing David Bowie's song. But you spent more than 160 days in space in total yeah, during your on, career. On three different space flights, too. Yeah, yeah I flew the, uh, on the space shuttle twice and, and was the pilot of the Soyuz, uh, the Russian spaceship, on my third flight and went to two different space stations. So, yeah, a long, interesting career. A lot of people saw that Bowie uh, cover, but, but I commanded the International Space Station last year. And the combination of seeing all that, seeing the world the way that you do from in those, uh, what did you say, 166 days? Yes, that's it that's was. like 2,600 times around the world. So you get an, an intimacy with the planet that, that is unparalleled. It's sort of, I think, in human experience, really. And of course, it meant you took around 45,000 photographs, <laughs> which now form, form this book. We were talking about this in the newsroom. We were wondering if you got bored at any point seeing the world go past uh, so often. No, no, not, not at all. In fact, most of the station is, as Bowie called it, a tin can, or at least an aluminum can. Uh, and it's not mostly glass. So when you do have a free moment, you have to make a deliberate effort to get to one of the rare windows to see the world. And when you do, it is, it is a privilege every time. It feels like, you know, uh, I don't know, if you walk into a magnificent concert hall and then the orchestra is warming up, or if you go into the Sistine Chapel, you know that this is a rare event in your life. It feels like that every time you pull yourself into this big uh, bulging window to see the world. Of course, you've worked with NASA and the Russian Space Agency and the rest of it. But now we're seeing the likes of Virgin Galactic yeah. pushing ahead and also with a few setbacks. What sure. was your reaction to that test flight crash? And, and what do you think about private space travel going forward? Well, one of my good friends is one of the test pilots for Virgin Galactic, so I was immediately concerned, of course, for my personal friend. Uh, he, wasn't, he was flying the carrier aircraft. I didn't know the test pilot who died, but I was a test pilot for many years. And we sort of forget, but test pilots die all the time. They take risks on our behalf. Every time you get on an airliner, you forget that, that many pilots died proving uh, all of the things you need to fly safely. It's just part of the business. We're in that stage for space travel now, the, the earliest days of trying to figure out, is there a way to make this commercial? So when I heard about it, I, I contacted Sir Richard. We've, we've been in touch many times and just I tried to at least give my perspective to him of this is not a this is a horrible thing to have lost a life and injured another uh, test pilot but it's not an an unexpected thing it's part of the process just to help him cuz of course the responsibility sits on his shoulders would you ever travel into space privately and uh, would you be interested in going even further perhaps on this Orion mission to Mars oh i sure i'd love to do both <laughs> but but the real question always is what in and who with mm -hmm. those are the two big questions and and uh, the what in is the big problem uh, for Virgin Galactic. They're just they're working on a vehicle, and it's it's a relatively simple vehicle, up and down. It can't take you around the world, but it's a great first step. Orion is sort of similar. It it only went a few thousand miles from the world this last week, uh, but it's proving the technology that eventually will take us to the moon and further, and sometime in the future, all the way to Mars. But we have many many roads to cross, bridges to cross before we've learned everything we need to not just learn but uh, invent before we can go to Mars. You're probably the most famous astronaut since Buzz Aldrin, since Buzz Lightyear, let's, <laughs> let's, let's be entirely honest. But your music career yeah. back here on Earth, how's that going? Actually, really well. I wrote a whole suite of music while I was on the space station, a few songs with my brother, one with my son, and, and some solo. 
and uh, I've performed them with symphonies now. We've put them to full orchestral, and it's a lovely way to tell the whole story, to have some imagery, to talk a bit, and then to play the music that was written up there. Um, and it, looking at making that into an album of, of a, the first, you know, complete set of music recorded in orbit. Um, and then, of course, Bowie, everywhere I go, people want me to play space Did you bring, space did you bring the guitar back from uh, that, No, it? no, the guitar stays on oh, station. Really? Oh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's, it's put there by our psychiatrists, okay. in fact, because they recognize how important music is just to being human, just to psychological health, to express yourself in a way that you can, can do no other way. And so it's being played every night up there. There's, there are lots of astronauts who play a little guitar, so it's a wonderful resource to have on orbit. Chris, thank you very much indeed. Oh, well, thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate Good to it. To meet you.